Welcome to part two of Finding Volumes of Solids of Revolution. In part one, we took a region bounded by two curves, we sketched it, we sliced it both vertically and horizontally, producing a washer and then a shell. In this part, we'll have example one. We'll take the region, revolve it about the x-axis, and use the disk method. In example two, we'll use the shell method. In example three, we'll revolve the region about the y-axis and use the disk method. In example four, the regions revolved around the y-axis and we used the shell method. So if you want to skip around to the different cases, you may. Here is example one stated in its entirety. The region bounded by the curves x minus 2y equal to 0 and y equals x squared over 8 is revolved about the x-axis. Use the disk method to find the volume of the solid generated. This is the same picture you saw in part one. And we saw how if we take a vertical strip and revolve it about the x-axis, we get a washer. A washer is a big disk minus a small disk, so we still call it the disk method. Our job is to find the volume of this washer. That means we need the volume of the big disk minus the volume of the small disk. The volume of a disk is its surface area, that's a circle, multiplied by its thickness. Notice the radii are the y-coordinates of the vertical strips. In math, it's very important to be organized. Whenever we do these problems, we should follow a procedure. And here's exactly what we should do. First, write down the thickness of the disk. It is a little change in x. See the dx? Our integral is going to be in terms of x. So when we label the endpoints, we're not going to have any y's. It's going to be all x's. Okay, look at the two endpoints. They have the same x coordinates. So let's go ahead and label those. Next, let's fill in the y coordinates. Remember, we're going to only use x's. The point on the top. What is y? Solve for it. 2y is equal to x, so y is x over 2. There it is. Now the bottom of the strip, y is x squared over 8. So put that in. Notice how everything is in terms of x. Now we have all the information we need to set up the volume of the washer. Ready? The volume of the washer is equal to the volume of the big disk minus the volume of the small disk. We get pi r squared times the thickness, where the big R denotes the big radius, minus pi r squared times the thickness, where the small r is used to denote the small radius. Let's factor out the pi. We get pi times big R squared minus small r squared times the thickness. The big R is also called the outer radius, the small r the inner radius. Okay, let's look for the big radius. What is it?
Yeah, right. That's just the big y coordinate. And what's the small radius? That's the small y coordinate, x squared over 8. What is the thickness? dx. So the volume of each washer can be expressed in this form, and we're going to add them all up. The total volume is now equal to the integral. See the integral sign? Do you know what that is? That's just a big S stretched out. The S comes from the word sum, S-U-M. That's because we're summing up all these tiny little things. Pi is a constant factor. Let's just leave it outside the integral. And to cover all the slices, x varies from 0 to 4. Let's simplify the terms before we integrate. Square them out. For both terms, it's the power rule for integration. Add 1 to the power and divide. So for the first term, we get 1 over 4 times x cubed over 3, that makes it x cubed over 12, minus, integrate x to the 4th, we get x to the 5th over 5. Next, we substitute the 4 in. We get 4 cubed, that's 64, minus 1 over 64. Now we have 4 to the 5th power. Now make your life easier. Don't multiply all that out. 4 to the 5th power is 4 cubed times 4 squared. 4 cubed is 64. 4 squared is 16. Why did I do that? Because look, the 64s just cancel out. 4 is a factor of 64 and 12, and that's why we end up with pi times 16 over 3 minus 16 over 5. Factor out a 16. We get 16 pi times 1 third minus 1 fifth. Getting easy. Common denominator is 15. We get 5 minus 3 on top. And here's the answer. QED. Did you like that one? In part 3, we'll use the shell method. I hope we get the same answer as this one. If not, I'll really retire. Bye for now. Have fun.